Hey friends, it's Jordan. Welcome back to another video. <laughs> video? Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, I'm Jordan. I am a certified nurse practitioner, a health coach, and a YouTuber. Today we're talking about the anti-acne diet and what I eat in a day to prevent acne and have as clear skin, healthy skin as possible. I've definitely struggled with hormonal acne. I've done videos on it in the past, but I really wanted to do an updated video. I feel like my skin is the best it's ever been and I really wanna share what I've been doing. Just do a close up of my skin. Why not? Mm. I read this really fantastic article. It's on a blog, but it's actually like one article that I think is like based in the most research and solid studies. I will leave a link to that article down below in the description so you can go and check it out. It's a long one, but I'm going to briefly, briefly summarize it for you. There are four key takeaways to the anti-acne diet. The first one is to increase your nutrient density. And this is just a fancy way of saying increase your foods that are full of nutrition like fruits, and vegetables. Foods in their whole natural form, those are going to be the most nutrient dense foods because they haven't been stripped of anything, they haven't been processed, they haven't had things taken out of them, they haven't had the fiber removed, all that good stuff. So real whole foods, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, high quality proteins, grains, legumes. I like to shoot for eight servings of fruits and vegetables a day, but if you're just getting started, I think five is a great one to shoot for. So that looks like a serving of fruit, maybe at breakfast, two different kinds of vegetables at lunch, and two different kinds of vegetables at dinner. Second factor is improving gut health. I am a firm believer that many disease states do start in the gut or they're worsened if the gut health is not on point. You guys know I'm definitely on a journey with working on my gut health. I'll link that video here. Working on my gut health, I have seen such an improvement in my skin. As I've mentioned, definitely my acne it has been hormonally based. It's been all in this area, which is a good sign to us that the acne is based on hormones and it would always kind of correlate with certain times in my cycle. So we wanna avoid foods and activities and things that disrupt hormones. And we want to regulate our immune system. So eating lots of foods and things that are gonna boost our immune system, keep infection at bay. So that's kind of overarching how I approach an anti-acne diet. So for breakfast this day, I had my anti-acne smoothie. This is a chocolatey mint smoothie and it is so, so good. It's a protein smoothie with a base of a non-dairy milk. Today I was using a cashew milk and a fourth of a frozen banana. I like to keep my fruit intake to a fourth of a cup or less. We don't want to spike insulin. We don't want to have too much sugar at any one sitting. Some frozen spinach and a fourth of an avocado or a half of a small avocado. The avocado is full of really healthy fats. Two tablespoons of flaxseed and mint and chocolate protein. Mint is really, really delicious, wonderful for your health, great for skin health. Flaxseed is really, really great for protecting our skin barrier. We have a natural moisturizing layer on our skin and when we overwash we and or over exfoliate we disrupt that skin barrier and a lot of products can disrupt that layer so flaxseed and flaxseed oil are really supportive of that omega-3 fatty acids in general are supportive of the skin's barrier after i have breakfast i typically take my vitamins and my supplements and i do supplement with an additional 1000 milligrams of omega-3 i get a lot of omega-3 from my diet if you're not getting as much of that you can go up to 2,000 milligrams of an EPA DHA omega-3 supplement. At least speak with your healthcare provider before starting any really high dose omega-3, but it's generally regarded as safe. Brings me to the next thing that I supplement with and some really important nutrients to make sure you're including in an anti-acne diet, and that is your fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin A and vitamin D. A really heavy hitter prescription-based acne medications that we have on the market right now are basically really, 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 really high doses of a compound like vitamin A. It's a retinoid based product. You can also try supplementing with vitamin A or increasing your intake of vitamin A 
foods just don't want to go over 10,000 international units of vitamin A a day. That's the max. Foods highest in vitamin A are actually going to be things like liver. So desiccated beef liver, you can take that in capsule form. You can eat beef liver if that's your jam. You could also do cod liver oil. Um, that's a really popular like natural remedy. And there's a really nice mint and lemon flavored one. I'll leave a link to it down below. Right now, I'm just taking this supplement called um, raw vitamin E, but it actually has all the fat soluble vitamins in it, like A, D, E, and K. And that is actually something my doctor uh, prescribed to me because oh, I was having a hard time digesting fats. And so this supplement is really supportive for getting those vitamins absorbed since I wasn't digesting fats very well and you need fats to digest these vitamins. I hope that wasn't too confusing. For all of the story, vitamin A and vitamin D, which is super important for the immune system, really important parts of an anti-acne diet. For lunch, I had a bunch of mixed vegetables and sweet potato. Sweet potato is a vegetable that's really high in vitamin A. I had that with two eggs and some tahini drizzle over the vegetables. Other additional things that I have throughout the day, I think this is like my one thing that really keeps like my skin consistent is having a cup of green tea every day. In green tea, you'll find a compound called EGCG. It has a long, long name, but we're just gonna <laughs> call it EGCG. Wonderful, wonderful thing that is anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, and anti-androgens. And if you're someone that's struggled with PCOS or any type of hormonal imbalance, sometimes it's, it's the increased androgen hormone in the body is part of the culprit for acne. So anything that's going to be anti-androgen is going to decrease sebum production and therefore improve acne. I definitely make sure to have one green tea every day. I either have a matcha latte, matcha is just like a green tea powder, or I have just a regular green tea from, you know, a typical green tea packet you can buy at the store. Let's talk about dairy because I do enjoy my matcha latte lately with raw dairy. I'll leave a link below to an article about raw milk if you're not familiar, but essentially it's, you know, similar to yogurt in that it's got a lot of enzymes and live bacteria, a product that many people find okay for their skin and it doesn't inflame or bother their skin like other dairy products can. The research really around dairy and acne really pinpoints the problem with skim milk and ice cream. That's where we find the research showing a correlation between acne and dairy is when it's from skim milk or an ice cream, which both are also highest in sugar. So is it the dairy? Is it the sugar? Is it the hormones in dairy? Is it the sugar? Is it the combination of both? I don't know that we've really isolated that in the research yet. If you're going to stay away from dairy products, stay away from those that are sweetened, skim milk, ice cream. I found that hard cheeses, aged cheeses, any type of fermented dairy products like yogurt, especially goat or um, sheep milk yogurt, and then now raw milk, I tend to not have a problem with it, but some people are very, very sensitive to dairy. So I think it's just kind of an individual thing where you've got to play around with it and experiment and find what works for you. Being a fermented foods, a great thing to add as kind of like a daily supplement, but it's a food, is two tablespoons every day of a raw, fresh sauerkraut. So I buy this brand. Usually you want to find it in like the refrigerated section versus the canned section. I just take like two forkfuls before I have my lunch every day and it's kind of like my dose of my probiotic. It really gets your digestive enzymes going if you enjoy it right before a meal. It can be really helpful for digestion. I actually learned that from my doctor and I've been doing it ever since. For dinner this day, I had a summer vegetable pasta. I will leave a link to the recipe down below. It was so, so good. Paired that with my protein, which was a filet of wild salmon that I cooked in ghee. Salmon, super high in omega-3, a high quality protein, really great, supportive for skin. All the vegetables from the pasta are really supportive for that nutrient density. You could use a gluten-free pasta or any type of pasta you like. Actually enjoy these vegetables without pasta or even on like zucchini noodles or, or on rice. If I'm gonna have pasta or rice, I just keep the portion to like half a cup and I seem to do just fine with that. I don't think there's any reason why you need to, you know, cut these out totally. I'll modify the portion and it still looks like a big, beautiful portion of pasta. So it's just, I just keep it to like a fourth of my plate or less or, you know, a half a cup and 
I still enjoy it every day. Cooking oils are really, really important, especially when it comes to inflammation. So I've been doing a lot of my cooking, especially high heat cooking in ghee, which is clarified butter. I've also been using avocado oil. I also use extra virgin olive oil in dressings, in drizzling, um, any type of like medium heat cooking, sometimes I'll use it as well. Seed oils like canola oil, soybean oil, rapeseed oil, sunflower seed oil, that's a, one I see a lot as well. These are really pro-inflammatory oils and especially if we're eating out a lot it's likely that food is cooked in those oils because they're a lot cheaper it, unless it says specifically that the food is cooked in you know a different kind of oil I try to cook with less inflammatory oils at home as and choose those as much as possible I always make sure to buy salad dressings that have an avocado oil base or an extra virgin olive oil base and I really try to minimize any of those other industrial seed oils that I talked about very pro-inflammatory in the body really high in omega-6s and we're trying to get more omega-3s to make a more anti-inflammatory type of environment. Yes to avocado oil, coconut oil, ghee, and extra virgin olive oil. No to the industrial seed oils. So this is what I eat in a day on a day that I'm really focusing on an anti-acne diet. Make sure you check out the description box below with all the links to anything that I might have mentioned. If you have questions, please leave them for me below in the comments. If you guys have questions about my current skincare routine, I'd be happy to share that too. It's very, very minimal. I'm not sitting here talking about this anti-acne diet and I'm, meanwhile, like in the background, I'm on some type of like anti-acne um, prescription. I don't use any prescriptions on, on my face. I don't use any product that's I think over $30 on my face. It's very, very minimal. Like this video if you liked it, obviously, and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps support the growth and continuation of my channel and I so appreciate it. And I will see you soon for another one. Bye.